So, as a start, can I just have a quick show of hands? How many people here had their career site changed, redesigned, whatever, in the last year? So about half of you. Cool. How many of you haven't had the re website redesigned in the last two years? So it's about probably 20%. Cool. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, I was reading some uh, research um, put together by the firm, and they said, you know, basically they found out with their members that a third of their members had had their career website redesigned within the last 12 months, six to 12 months. There was another third that had the website designed in the last 12 months to two years, which leaves another third that haven't had the website touched in over two years. Um, so really, what we got is what I call, really, you got a case of the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of career sites. I'm sure everybody out here has seen some examples of some bad career websites. I've just pulled some websites as random. Um, this one is CPM Jobs. As you can see, um, it's fairly interactive. Uh, it's got a lot of video and a lot of information, and you can scroll down and find jobs. I saw websites like that about 15 years ago. And they're recruiting sales and marketing people. Um, have a look at another one, Hiscox. It's basically, to be honest, this could be a bit of a skin of your ATS, and actually that's what it is. Um, and what's worse is if we look at the actual job part, that's actually what we call an iframe. Now, for those of you who don't know, an iframe is basically another website that's displayed through a window on your website. Google can't see that. So basically, you're hiding all your jobs from Google. Then we've got British Red Cross. Obviously, you can imagine they're trying to recruit people. Again, fairly static job search. Again, you know, to be honest, if you started um, putting down a location, a role, and a salary, and pressing search, you'd probably get zero results. So you'd have to go back and research. So again, not great candidate experience. Schroders, anybody use Taleo out here? Yeah, you probably recognize Taleo. Um, again, where does that job search sit? It sits on Taleo servers, not your career site. So it's doing great in terms of search engine optimization for Taleo, but it's not helping you. Co-op, again, getting better. It's nicer, it's a nice look. Um, nice big button there, see all jobs and apply. Click on that, okay, I've got to make another choice. Uh, where do I want to work? Do I want to work internal? Do I want to work in uh, the food stores? Or do I want to work anywhere else? And here, this is the latest version of Taleo, but again, suddenly, where's my menu gone? Where's my interaction? Where's the, my ability to actually move around and find out more? So, yeah, some examples of you know, not very well branded you know, from, a, from a job point of view. Then we start getting a bit better. Yeah, actually, to come back, the one good thing about the cop, it's mobile optimized. So it's responsive both in terms of the actual front end uh, career site and actually the job search. Uh, dairy Crest, you'd never guess they did things with dairies, with the cows. Um, and again, looks nice, you've got some nice you know, employees, it's not overly corporate. But you've got, you then look down, it says vacancies and applications. Living it, our dedicated uh, recruitment site. Hold on, I thought I was on the career site. No, there's another website which has actually got the jobs on. So you've got two career sites. So really what we tend to have in terms of corporate and a direct employer career sites is a mishmash of ATS web portals, nicely designed front ends linking to an ATS portal, or a dedicated branded uh, job platform. Um, and what also we're seeing, I mean, there's 50% of he people here put, the, put their hands up and said the website had had something done in the last 12 months. That's great. But for the remaining 50%, we have what we call the lighthouse syndrome. Now, the lighthouse syndrome is quite simple. Here we have Beachy Head. The lighthouse has been built. It stands powerful. There, everybody can see it. Doesn't change for 100 years. You know, the last Beachy Head one was over there, and they suddenly decided we need it over here. So effectively, nothing actually happens between it being built and 100 years later. And a lot of career websites, you know, that's exactly the same. But We've all been talking about talent attraction, and we've been talking about marketing. Yeah, Simon at Creed was talking about yeah, internal communications, internal marketing campaigns. It's all about marketing to drive talent to our internal referral sites, our recruitment career sites, 
yet what we're actually doing, we've got essentially a website that just stands there, or have we got a recruitment marketing platform? And from what I've, the conversations I've had and I'm hearing is that actually, you know, your career site, you want it to be your recruitment marketing platform. So in terms of recruitment marketing, how do we improve? We need to continue to look at actually how well our career sites are converting. Because ultimately what our career sites have to do is get somebody who's relevant to apply for a job that we can hire, or to get somebody to refer us to a friend, colleague, or anybody else. So it's quite simple, but if we're not measuring or we're not improving that conversion rate, we're standing still and becoming the lighthouse. So what it is, is in terms of, so what is conversion rate optimization? What is the ability to actually improve things? It's quite simple. You know, conversion rate is simply the, the process of optimizing website performance incrementally to increase return on investment. And what I mean by internal investment, that is in terms of you, know, you generating more candidates that you hire and not use agencies. You know, not have to pay massive referral bonuses because actually you're driving and engaging people. We've already talked about the fact that you don't need it. Or actually only need to use, you, know, you target your advertising on job boards that really work. So we've been hearing a lot about you know, read, understanding you know, their, the, the target audience. So look at job boards that are actually working. But ultimately what you want to do is be able to look at that across all the board. And it's quite simple. It's unique visits, or unique visitors, divided by the applications equals your conversion rate. So how many people here measure this on a regular basis? Okay, about three. Okay, so at the moment we've got, we've got this issue in terms of we, we don't know how well our website, our career website is actually performing. Um, but we've just had 50% of you say that you've had your new website launched. So it's a case if we've got a great new website, we don't need to do anything, that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, actually, you know, how well do you know uh, that it's actually performing? Um, and by improving it incrementally, it's basically taking methodo methodology that has been used uh, well in advance of uh, me standing up here. Um, some people who have worked in manufacturing may uh, actually recognize this, the Kazen uh, methodology. Now, Kazen is a process that came out of uh, the Second World War where the US uh, basically couldn't make enough munitions um, to basically support their campaigns in, in um, the, the Pacific. So what they looked at, there was no silver bullet. They could not change the entire process and double production. So they started looking at all the individual processes that they went through. And actually what they identified was that they could make small changes that overall, by making all those small changes, they would actually be able to double their production. So we all know, you know, all the movies tell us that the US went on, they won the war, uh, and everybody lived happily, happily ever after. Um, but actually what they then needed to do was rebuild Japan. So they went in and worked with a small company, Toyota, um, and used the same process to rebuild Japan. They looked at all the processes that were needed to be put together and really were then able to rebuild Japan very quickly and obviously Japan became one of the powerhouses of the, of the 20th century. And we use exactly the same methodology when it comes to improving a career website and improving the conversions. So when it comes to a career website or any website, the secret to getting great user experience is basically fixing the tension so think about it yourselves. If you are um, shopping online and you, you want to buy something and then you've got this great huge form that you need to fill in to actually make that purchase, you haven't got your credit card details, it doesn't accept PayPal, you start getting frustrated. So it's exactly the same process that we look at when we're actually looking at um, a career website. And it's quite simple. You know, what does a visitor to a career website, or what do you want them to do? Well, ultimately, you want to apply for a job. But if they're not, you haven't got a job that's relevant for them, we all talked about talent pooling and talent pipelines. Um, so it's a case of, can they register an interest? Can they effectively start following you? So can they set up a jobs by email? If you want them to, can they send a CV through? Um, will it go into their talent pool? Um, but then it's a case of, do they want to share content? So there's lots of little things that you can actually get a candidate to do, or a potential candidate to do, but ultimately you want them to engage. What does a candidate want to do? It's quite simple. They want to get your attention. 
They want you to notice who they are, to notice who they are as an individual and what they can bring to your business. Um, but they also want to understand who you are. So they want to understand what it is like to work at your business, what it is like to be an employee. Do you have agile working? Do you have flexible benefits? Do you have fle um, the ability to work from home? Do you have the ability to uh, dress down, effectively dress smartly, but wear jeans? And that's about it. It's quite simple what they want to do. So there's loads of things that can impact um, the candidate user journey. Um, the first part of it is in terms of design. You know, per, you know, the actual design needs to be easy for them to use. It needs to be not too cluttered. It needs to give them what they actually need to find out. Um, if you survey candidates and ask them what they want to, oh, sorry, I'll take my word out. If you, if you survey job seekers, what do they want to do? They want to be able to search for a job easily. You know, don't make them click three or four times to find those jobs and that job search. Make it front and center. Can you imagine if you were, if Go if you were Google and you had to click three times to actually get in and Google what you wanted to find? You wouldn't do it. So take a, take a lead from what's going on there. Um, yeah, it's a great content. How well the job advert's written. I, ro I run regular sessions on advertising, copywriting, and yeah, the first thing I do is I show people a job. It's like that. Yeah, it's the entire job spec. Yeah, right click, copy, paste. And that's the problem. But one of the things in terms of in making it relevant, making it contextual, whether it's personal, um, but one of the important things is site speed. Yeah, if we looked at what Amazon and Google do, and Amazon spend millions, if not billions, on user experience, can anybody remember you know, Amazon suddenly relaunching their website and it's suddenly looking different? It doesn't. They incrementally change things. It's the position of the actual um, you know, add to your basket, put into your you know, buy now. They'll move it a couple of pixels. Um, but what they actually worked out, that a page load of just one second slower could cost them 1.6 billion in sales each year. Google calculated similar. Um, it looked at performance. And basically, you know, if the search results slowed down by just four-tenths of a second, eight million searches per day would be lost. Now, Google make a lot of money putting adverts in front of you. So if they lost those number of searches, that's an awful lot of money. So little things like that, speed of actual the website working, is really, really important. But what we need to come back to is measure the important things. What is ultimately important? Um, and that's to come back to, as I say again, it's how many people come in at the top of that funnel and then convert into actual applications. Then you can measure into hires as well. So basically, you're just measuring that funnel and taking it down to see how effective your you know, talent attraction, your career site actually is. Um, but you don't necessarily do it in terms of uniques. So here we've got what we call um, you know, a quick apply. So how quickly and how easy is it for somebody to apply? So you know, how many people click the apply button and then actually end up in your applicant tracking system? You know, so that you see there, we've got you know, 106. Uh, start it, so drop off is actually almost 70% actually dropping off. Now, we've worked with a number of employers, and we talked to a number of employers who use you know, applicant tracking systems. Taleo drop off between people clicking the apply and actually ending up in Taleo can be anything on average between 40 and 60%. We spoke to one company who came to us and they said it was 80%. So they're only converting 20% of the people that start actually click on apply into applications. So, you know, we come back to, you know, and the reason for it is how many people have used Taleo recognize the Taleo login screen. Um, most, when we do observe testing, what happens is a, an applicant immediately goes and puts in the, a username and a password and then goes, oh, login, new user. Oh, I've got to now create a new user account. Then they start again, and then because you have to use an alphanumeric um, username uh, with special characters, invariably what happens, you get error, and it tells them what to do. Sorry, I'm bored. I've left. I've gone. So you know, what we did you know, with Atkins, uh, the, basically we used the API. So essentially, the application form is um, very similar to anybody that's you know, registered with a, a, on a job board, on a, a, you know, a retail site. Um, it's basically getting your personal details. And if you're using Google Chrome, it's already completing it. Um, so what that means is that we're basically helping somebody, and they're not actually having to create an account. It's essentially just creating it for them. Um, they can upload their CV um, through Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, if, they've got, if they're on their iPhone, they can add it as well. Um, they tick the box uh, once they've uploaded their CV, and they actually, that candidate's details are put into Taleo. Now, what we've done is work with the, with the recruiters to say, okay, what essential information do you need 
to be able to tell whether that's a suitable candidate. I said, well, we need to be able to tell who they are, you know, a con method of contact. Um, you know, the actually, it would be quite nice to find out who they work for, uh, how much they're being paid, and where, where they live. You, know, you could shorten that. We've got another client that we're implementing at the moment. It's just contact details. Attach the CV, because as a recruiter, I know whether that person is suitable. And yes, I need to get other information to complete compliance. And there are other questions that I need answered. Diversity and inclusion, EEO in the States. But I don't need to get that yet. If they're a good candidate, they get an email automatically cut out of the system with the login details. They're asked to complete their application form. But I don't have to wait. Now, what does that actually mean in reality? It meant that there was a 50% increase in the completed applications literally overnight. And we're not talking hundreds, we're talking thousands of applications each month. So that was a big change. So in terms of it, you know, where you're looking at fixing it, there's no point in us going out and saying, right, we're going to double the amount of people visiting your website, because you know, we would be losing candidates because of the, you know, the application method through Soleo. So now we've got that sorted, we can start looking at other things. And this is where we take a light lead from online retail. So. What a retail very good. You know, you've all been followed around the web in terms of you've looked at this and it starts popping up in front of you, or you're looking at this in, on Tesco's site and actually they're pushing, actually if you want that meat, you want these roast potatoes to go with it. But then take one of the best examples, Amazon. Who'd realize or recognize what I'd been looking at before I went back to the Amazon? Oh look, I've been browsing at TVs and I've been browsing digital cameras. The other scary thing was I saw that I'd been a customer since 2000. Again, I started feeling old. But in terms of what Amazon do, it's in terms of, you know, look at it from recruitment point. I'm interested in oil and gas jobs. Make sure that I'm putting oil and gas jobs together with oil and gas content. It's quite logical that somebody who's interested in a, in a, a job within the oil and gas sector would be interested in what's going on in the oil and gas sector. Take it a next step further. So in terms of Amazon, what also they're very good at is when you land on a product, you have other what they call sponsored products, or other TVs, and also what other people bought. So they're moving you around and saying, if you're interested in this, you might be interested in this. Again, we can take exactly the same approach with career sites. So when somebody lands on a vacancy, they may not have come from the home page, they may have come from Indeed or direct from Google. So transportation jobs, you can easily view all of transportation jobs. You can look at flexible working, because this role offers flexible working. Alongside it, you've got similar jobs. So again, we're giving people opportunities to engage in different ways. They scroll down the job. This is a bit of a war and peace example. Um, and you've got an, a video, transforming transportation. Again, a relevant video for that vacancy. Keep scrolling down, and you've got projects that are working on. So it's interesting with TFL, the Oxford Circus Diagonal Crossing is one of the projects they're working on. So again, it's relevant um, projects for a trans somebody who's working in transportation. It's called contextualization. So what we've done now is, you know, we're basically attracting, we've got our lovely site, we're attracting great people. Um, you know, we're engaging with them, giving them relevant content. We know they're able to apply easily into our applicant tracking system. But what about the fact where you know, we might make a mistake and, and when we're actually post-sharing a, a, a web address uh, on, the or on, on LinkedIn or something, or tell you what, what happens when they complete their application? What's the last page? When was the last time anybody here actually went through the application process on their career site and in their applicant tracking system? How many of them just say, thank you, your application has been submitted? You know, imagine if e EasyJet did that. So in terms of thank you, bye. Um, but actually when you complete your booking, it's a case of what else do you need? car rental in Berlin, travel insurance, airport transfer. They're effectively selling you opportunities or giving you information. So what do candidates want when they've actually look, applied for a job? They want to know the next steps. They want to know what else they can do. So again, you can use a thank you page to actually give them some options. So we use, we've been using this now uh, with the recruitment businesses and some of our direct employers in terms of thank you for applying. Here's what you can do next. next. Manage your job alerts, start a new job search, return to your pre results find out more information. You're giving them options. But as I mentioned, the other side of it is, what if I, if I post a page and I, I mistype it, or I've done an email shot, um, and it basically means that I come back to the career site and I get the error, page not found. Happens all the time on the web. Um, 
not just our fault, but in terms of, you know, you've got websites out there that are pointing back to your uh, website, they're scraping content. Um, and what happens, you go to 404, so hey, rather than saying, error, this page doesn't exist, say, oops, sorry, this page doesn't exist, let's help, help you find what you want. So direct them through to a job search, career areas, our blogs. You're giving them options. It's an error, but they don't think it's an error. So we're basically shutting off and making sure that whenever a candidate visits our site or a visitor or uh, somebody's just finding out information, they're never trapped or they go down a, what we call a rabbit hole. So we've now, if you like, we've, we've done some fairly major changes. We've made sure that people are having a great experience. Now what we want to do, we're getting into the real, um, the science of conversion rate optimization. We want people to actually apply for a job or do something now. We don't want them to wait and think, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, and then invariably forget. So it's what we call scarcity and re reward. If you look at the travel industry, they've been doing it for a long time. You know, booking.com, you know, use green as a reward. You know, in terms of, you know, prices might go up, so secure your reservation today. You know, features, bathtub, private room, free Wi-Fi, all of these are green. They're nice and positive messages uh, coming through. Red is a sense of urgency. You know, save 33% today. Three people are looking at this right now. So there's lots of things in terms of you've got to do something. And the, one of the best companies and examples of this is our friend eBay. You, know, you might have noticed I've been looking at digital cameras. I almost spent an absolute fortune on a second-hand digital camera because eBay was telling me that I only had 10 minutes left to go and I needed to make this purchase now. So I'd set myself a budget and somebody then comes back and bids higher and I'm like, oh no, I've got to click. My laugh says, stop. You don't have to do that. You've already checked on Camera Jungle, and you know that that camera, that you can buy one for that price. So, you know, good, um, scarcity is a great way of getting that sense of urgency. And we've been rolling this out with recruitment clients for great success, and it goes into Empower very shortly in terms of exactly the same process to get the sense of urgency to make somebody want to apply. So it's looking at getting more people, to, rather than just be a visitor, to actually come straight in. What else can we do? Okay, you're now getting into the, the really, the, the highly scientific stuff. This is about micro-conversions. So this is like capturing information that people that may not be right to actually apply yet. So making sure that we're getting good um, numbers of job alert sign-ups. Um, how are our conversions via mobile? Um, mentioned Atkins earlier. They get the same conversion rate in terms of um, applications on mobile as they do on desktop. It's literally within about half a percent. So it shows that the mobile side of things is working. Do you want somebody to be able to contact a recruiter and ask questions? Now, when I first suggested this to an in-house team, they looked at me in absolute horror and said, oh my God, all these people will contact us. And the head of talent looked at them and went, heaven forbid we'd want potential candidates to contact us. Yes, you need to manage it, but are there instances where you've got recruitment specialists recruiting really niche roles where actually you want people to be able to reach out and connect? but not necessarily via LinkedIn on your own career site. You know, do you want to be able to capture their name and email? So literally short things that capture what are you interested in, gives, gives you a little bit of information and will help you find what you want. Um, get more views of your content, get more of an insight. We were talking uh, on a table about showing what it's really like to work at, at an organization. So you know, get people to sign up for you know, blogs, articles, insight pieces, call it what you will. And what we are calling the, this is register an interest. For many years, I've heard people saying, yeah, we need people to, to register for our talent bank. Candidates don't know what a talent bank is. They're, you know, they're not in recruiters. But what they do know is they're interested, and they want to show that they're interested, and they want to be kept abreast of what's going on. So we, we're starting to use the terminology register an interest. And this is where it comes down to focusing the one percenters. So many of you, are, you know, will know this uh, profile, Mr. Brailsford, with his Team GB uh, badge on. Okay, he's not qu quite got the good press at the moment. But what he was brilliant at was understanding all the 1%. So you know, why did he make sure that all his cyclist mattresses were taken overseas? Why did he take a chef with them overseas? Because he knew that if they all got a good night's sleep and they all didn't have any problems with food, he didn't have the risk of them getting a badly tummy or uh, you know, not being wide awake. It's all about those 1%, because we come back to KZEN, it's all about adding up those 1% to get a better result. A-B testing. Okay, a little show of hands here. Uh, who thought, thinks that the 
top right apply button is the most successful? One. Okay. Who thinks the bottom left? Three or four. Top right? Oh, a bit more people, so about 20. Bottom right? That's about split. It's actually top right. Why is it the top right? We had about 5% more conversions for the top right button. Why did we have the top right? It looks like a button. Yeah, we have, you know, as designers, and this is for a digital uh, marketing uh, company, you know, apply, it was lots of animation on it, it rotated, it looks cool. Um, you know, but actually, from a potential candidate point of view and a visitor, the top right one, it, it was Ron Seal. They knew exactly what it was to do. And we do that across a lot of calls to action. We also do observed testing. So it's an observed testing of a competitor uh, site from one of our clients. And we were looking at forms, and it looks a fairly innocuous register form, name, surname, email, password, confirm password. The chap there, who's actually doing the testing, is in America. He doesn't know what surname is. He's going, what is, you know, he's basically said in the video, he said, what surname? Most of the people in America haven't got a clue what surname. He'd worked with an English company, so he realized that actually it was last name. So simple things like that. And we had another chap that we observed in a video testing and literally was going, pounding his fist, going, what is this surname? What do they want me to put here? So it's little things like that create great tension and basically mean that you don't get somebody actually completing the form. So lots of testing like that this can be carried out. Heat mapping to see what people click on. The A-B testing in terms of the actual um, seeing what people actually, what buttons work. A really good insights in making small changes that are relatively easy, but make a big difference when they add up. Um, the final bit that you can do is with regards to where your visitors are coming from. So whether they're coming from, you know, Google, LinkedIn, Indeed, job site, I haven't got read on here, but um, in terms of people are coming to your website from a number of different uh, areas. Um, indeed, top right, the average bounce rate from Indeed, in, and what I mean by bounce rate is somebody landing on, a, on the job and leaving straight away without doing anything, is between 75 and 80 percent. So you're losing all of these visitors coming from Indeed and they're just leaving because the job's not suitable. So what we actually looked at, we thought this isn't right. Yeah, and there's other sites that people are coming from. So we thought well, th th we must be able to do something. So we're losing you know, potentially 80% of the visitors. And I can't believe that every one of those is not relevant. So what we basically do, we can basically tell what website they've come from, and we put a little pop-up in front of them. So you know, we know that the user experience of, of a, a job seeker on Indeed is very frustrating. They're bouncing around from various different websites, job boards, recruitment agency websites, corporate career websites. It's really frustrating. So make it really easy. easy. We know what jobs they've landed on. We know what job category. So for example, this one is a client lead within the, uh, I think it's customer service team. So we know which job family they are. We know the location. So all we need is their, a name and an email address, and we've automatically set them up a job alert. You've also, because you get this, basically you get this data is all accessible, you've also got a, building up a list of people that you can segment and actually market to as well. They may not have actually applied to a job, but you've got a, effectively a mailing list. So it's a really easy way. And you know, we're seeing, you know, basically we're seeing, so if, if uh, 200 people visit, landed on that vacancy, we're seeing about 25% are actually completing these forms. So it's actually capturing, you know, we've got 20% who have actually carried on and done something, and we've now got another 25% of people's information. So we've effectively reduced the bounce rate from 80% down to around 40 to 45%, which is very good. So, so little things that some of which are, you know, the, the application process, I agree that's not going to be solved overnight, but there's some little things that can be improved with your own career site. So for example, relevancy. If you're talking at you, build pages, create pages that talk about the job families, that have information about what it's like to work, some videos about what it's like to work. Pull through, so if you, you may be using an applicant tracking system, you may not have your jobs on the career site, but create some dummy profiles, some profiles of people that are in customer service, that are in finance, so that effectively they become your jobs and have links to that when somebody lands there, it creates a really relevant experience. But first, you need to work out what your conversion rate is. You need to look at how 
well or how badly your career site is doing. Once you've done that, you need to look at it with really quite objective eyes um, and don't get too close to it. You need to look at, if I use this as a, a, a visitor and a potential candidate, what do I think? What is, where is the tension? And think recruitment marketing platform, not website. Avoid being a lighthouse. Thank you. Any questions?